So using the NT framework, the first thing you'll need is to have some kind of context about how the database should look, how the beta database should work, what the access to the database is. So think of this as a way for us to start actually working with the database. You need the context of how the database should actually uh, be, right? Now that context is called a context inside the NT framework, so that's kind of neat. What I'm doing now is I'm going to create a new context for us by making a new folder first. Again, I want to split this up. So I'll make a new folder and I'll just call that folder context like this. That's going to contain the context and the first one we'll make is for in-memory work and the next one we'll make is for real database later on, but that'll be in the next series somewhere. So in the context folder, I'm going to add a new class and that class is actually going to be in-memory context. That's what I'm going to call it, in-memory context. So again, the idea behind the in-memory context is think of this as the way for me writing C-sharp code, I'm going to try and define what my database should look like. I'm going to define what table should be in there. I'm going to define how do I access this, right? So I'm going to try and figure out how I can explain using C-sharp code how context should actually look, how the database should actually look. So now we have the context and step one is we want to extend something called the DB context, which is um, something that we get from the entity framework call, right? The DB context is an overall way to manage databases that the .NET framework actually created for us, the entity framework core. So we'll use that and we'll extend on that. And that's pretty much all we would have to do, but I want a few more things because I need to explain that I want to go in memory here instead of actually having a real database. So the next thing I'll do for this lesson is I'll add a new constructor. The constructor is going to be called this. Uh, yeah, of course, Lars. Uh, I knew that. Yes, I know you knew that, but I still had to tell you. <laughs> so when using a constructor, right now we have a superclass right here, and then we have a subclass right here. If we want to use a function inside the superclass or the constructor inside the superclass, then in Java you write something with super here. But in C sharp, we pretty much just do a colon and we write base like this. That's how we call a superclass. What we want to do in this base is we want to add some options explaining that we want in memory. So next step is for us to actually provide information or options that we want to create this as a memory, in-memory database. And I have to just be honest with you, I'm going to, I'm going to paste this in because this will take a long time to write. Um, and before you guys freak out and run away from the screen and, and yell at somebody, let's just read this. It's not, it's, it, there's a lot of stuff we don't have to understand here. It's just, it's configuration that we have to do once and for all. And it's the same every time we want to use an in-memory database. And then later on, we need to do the same for actual real databases. We'll do something like it and then we'll talk more about it. But we're going to make what we call DB context options. And we're going to do that for the current context, this guy right here. That's kind of what we're saying right here. And we're just going to call that variable, uh, sorry, that variable for options, right? And I'm going to make it static because this guy is going to contain the information about the in-memory database. I'm going to make a new one using a builder which can build options for me because I don't want to do it manually. And one of the things the builder can actually do, this guy right here, one of the things it can do is it can make an in-memory database with this single call right here. And then when that is done, it just returns a list of options, which is pretty much a connection string, a string that has information about how I can connect, how I can work with the database, actually. So this is, you're going to do something similar when we need to connect to a real database, just with a SQL, uh, sorry, with a connection string instead, something like I'm going to connect to Azure somewhere, I'm going to connect to um, the database in, in this network right here. So that's for later use. Right now we just created in memory a database we called the DB and we have the options for it right here so we'll just paste that options in here that's all we had to do. Now we have an in memory context that actually knows how to do um, make an in memory database and we'll use that in the next couple of lessons. See you next time.